see his face. And the mother reminded her, the mother reminded her, you may not always see his face, but you've got to always know that he is present. Yeah. And the reality for all of us, for all of us, for most of us, is that we do trust God, we do believe in God, we do have faith in God, but there are some times we just wish we could, we could see his face. Uh, because some kind of way in our minds that gives us, it would gives us, give us a, a, a more sense of solace, a more sense of everything is going to be all right. It's something about seeing someone's face. And so when I think about the anxiety possibly, the, uh, the angst that this young lady uh, was experiencing, not being able, as she said, to see God's face, I'm reminded in the scripture that possibly could have been what the disciples were experiencing uh, the night that we read John chapter 14, the night that Jesus, the Bible says, the night that he was betrayed. What kind of emotions, what kind of feelings, what were they going through during that moment, during that minute when Jesus is giving them a discourse, hopefully, and encouraging them. But the reality is that he had said something that had so pricked their heart that their emotions were stirred to the point that he has to say to them, let not your heart be troubled. And of course, you know, this is a verse that most of us, if you attended a funeral on yesterday, more than likely you heard this verse read, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. But I said sometimes when we pause, when we slow down, when we go a little slower, it's important for us to ask the questions to the text. Why did Jesus say to his disciples, let not your heart be troubled? Many times when we look at that, automatically we will apply it to our situation, automatically apply it to our circumstance. But when we look at the historical context, the historical events that were transpired when Jesus made this statement, we can come to understand and identify with the disciples that there are times in life that trouble will come our way. And you and I too have to be reminded, let not your heart be troubled. And so when we come to John 14, again, it is a passage that most of us are familiar with. When you think about it, those first six verses, most of us can quote it uh, verbatim. It's, it's probably the, the, the chapter in the New Testament, or we say the verses in the New Testament that we know most of us, all of us can literally quote uh, Psalm 23, from, from beginning to end, uh, the most popular verse is John 3.16, what, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, will who believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. But John 14 is that verse that we normally hear at funerals. It, it is a reminder that the, the idea is that it can be a source of encouragement to someone that may be going through a tough time. But what was it that the disciples what was it that they were experiencing at that time? Just a couple of things I want to share with you, and we will, again, pray um, and, and share everything else that God will give us for this particular day. When you notice when Jesus is speaking to them, uh, the first thing that he does, or the first movement in this particular text, is that Jesus spoke to them a prohibition for comfort. Listen, he spoke to them a prohibition for comfort. Listen to what I said. He spoke to them a prohibition for for comfort. Prohibition means don't do something. Stop doing whatever it is that you were doing. But the goal was that he would say that to them so that they could be comforted by his words. Notice, let not. That's a negative. Don't do. Don't let your heart be troubled. In other words, don't allow your inner self to be emotionally distressed. That's what that word means. Again, when he says, let not, he's saying again, it, it's the idea that something has transpired, something has happened in your life, not necessarily that you brought it on yourself, but it's just the fact that it is a reality of living in a fallen world. Can I say to some young people that are in here today, don't think that trust in Christ means that you're going to be absent of trouble. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't buy in. Don't buy in to the false prophets and the false teachers who tell us that having Jesus Christ gives you a smooth life. It's a comfortable life. It is a filet mignon everyday life. 
No, trust in Jesus sometimes is a bologna sandwich life. And not Oscar Mayer either. Trusting, trust in Christ does not mean that life will go smoothly all the time. No, no, no. Trusting Jesus, he even said it. In this life, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Why? Because I have what overcome the world. I, in this world, you're going to have, but I have overcome the world. So he says, let not your heart be troubled. He had given a prohibition, but that prohibition ought to be leading to comfort. Because notice what he is, he's saying. Let not your heart, when he talks about your heart, what is he talking about? It's your will. It's your it's your desires, it's your intentions, your motives, your decisions, your choices, your attitudes, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, all of those things that, that, that happen within the heart of your mind can cause you trouble. Oh yeah, it can cause you to have this sense of something is not right, something is, is chaotic, something is, is literally causing us to be disturbed because there are things that go on in life that will bring you down to the point that you feel like you're about to lose your mind. There are things that can happen in life that can be so, so, so serious, man, that you, you cry until the point there are no more tears to shed. There are things that can happen in life that man that just hit you at your core, that if somebody would have told you 10 years before that would have happened, you would have said, man, I won't make it. That, 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 that. When I look at this audience, there are, there are those of you that have experienced trouble. You know what trouble is. You, you know what that means. And don't ever think that just because you are a believer that you won't experience trouble. As a matter of fact, turn with me to chapter 13 for, I mean, just for just a moment. Look at verse 21. John chapter 13, verse 21. Just one, one, one passage or one, one chapter over. Notice what it says. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit. He was troubled in spirit. He was what? Troubled in spirit. Jesus was what? Troubled in spirit. He was distressed. He was emotionally distressed by what he had just said to his disciples. So the reality for us, if Jesus experienced trouble on the level and plane of where he existed with us, it's automatic that you and I are going to experience trouble in our own hearts. Uh, and thank God, thank God for Jesus. The Bible, the Bible reminds us, the Bible reminds us in Hebrews chapter 5, that he learned obedience through the things he suffered. In other words, he had this was this was an experience that he had never experienced before as God, but as the God man. He now what can identify with you and I and watch this and help us to know what to do when trouble comes our way. You do remember he says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, we 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 do not have a high priest who is not in touch with the infirmities of our weaknesses. But he was what attempted at all points, just as we are, yet without sin. Jesus experienced those things that can cause trouble, emotional distress, those things, those desires, those, those motives, those decisions, and choices that we make in life that can lead to trouble. He gives us a word on how to handle it when it comes. So, so notice, so notice now. What was it, what was it that Jesus said? that led to him having to say, let not your heart be troubled. I'm glad you asked. Look again. You're staying at, at chapter 13. Look at staying at chapter 13. Look again. Again, he, he reminds us in verse 33. Look at verse 33 of chapter 13. Notice what Jesus says. He starts off by saying, little children, little children, little, little, watch this, little ones who depend on me. Watch. Here's what I, here's what I love about the Lord. We never get to the point that we're too, so mature that he doesn't call us his children. Because here's what I learned about children. The one thing children do is depend on somebody else. 
can, can I get a witness in here? Children do what they trust somebody else. Children do what they rely on somebody else. So he starts off the statement where, again, re appealing and saying it to people that have been reliant on him for three and a half years. For three and a half years, they haven't had to worry about where they're going to eat. Because if you're hungry, I take two little fish, five barley loaves, and it, when, when you go out on the sea and you guys are fishermen and storms come up, I know how to speak to the storm. Matter of fact, if I want, I walk on the water and calm the storm. So here he is, says, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say, what? Wait a minute. Remember, like the little girl, they were seeing the face of God. And the mere fact that here they are walking with God for three and a half years. And now God is saying, Little children, I won't be with you long. You, have you ever paid attention to a child that loves their parents? And, and, then, and then something happens that they got to go to somebody else? Have you ever heard how a child can scream and holler? It, I mean, I can only imagine the anxiety if we could study their mind, what's going on in their mind. And y'all know how it is as parents, you want to break so much that you're pushing them. All right, all right. Go, babe. Go. And the baby is screaming and hollering. And there was, I don't know why they're acting like that. Hey! They have been with mama and daddy for all of this time, and now you want me to separate from the folk that I know take care of me? You ever, you ever, you ever pay attention to that? So can you imagine what the disciples were going through to hear Jesus make the statement, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer? You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say, Jesus, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The only time that we have been separated from you is when you told us to go out and preach the gospel. You told us to go. The only time we've been separated from you is when you, when you told us, you said, just, just stay here for a little while while I go to pray. What, G, what Jesus, what are you talking about? For a little while longer, I, I, I'll be with you, but, but I'm, where I'm going, you cannot come. Notice, notice the anxiety. Think about what those 11 men had to be thinking in their mind. Because they are anticipating what? The kingdom of God to come. Jesus has been talking about the kingdom. Now he's talking about going away. We, we, that's, that's difficult for us to understand. That's difficult for us to comprehend. I'm just not getting that. I don't feel that, Jesus. What are you, what are you talking about? You're going away. And where you're going, we cannot come. Can you imagine what they had to be going through at that moment? Because they have no answer. They have no answer. And the only thing that he comes up with, here's what I say to you, love one another. Wait a minute, Jesus, you just said you're going away. Because notice what happens. Notice what happens. You know, we went through verse 34 and 35, right? A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Verse 35, by this all will know that you're my disciples. What if you have love for one another? But Peter didn't pay attention to that. He paid attention to what Jesus had said in verse 33. Notice what, he have, what happens in verse 36 of chapter 13. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Isn't that a legitimate question? You've been with us three and a half years. Where are you going? And where are you going that we can't go? Where are you going? In other words, so he said, Jesus answered, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. But you shall, fo you shall follow me afterward. Peter said, Lord, why, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. All right, here it comes. Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for my sake? I sh surely I say to you, 
the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me. Whoa. Now, now remember, now remember, 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 actually earlier in the upper room, Jesus had said to them, one of you is going to betray me. Then he makes the statement, I'm going away, and where I'm going, you can't come. And then he says, you are going to deny me. Think about that. Betrayal. The sense of abandonment. Knowing that somebody is going to deny the very Lord that created them. Can you imagine what those disciples are going through in their mind? One of you is going to betray me? Going to betray Jesus? I mean, Jesus who has provided for me for three and a half years, I'm going to betray the one that has allowed food to be on my table, clothes to be on my back. This is the one that I could leave a business, James and John would say, a thriving fishing business, but he had me to make so much money three, three and a half years ago that it's still taking care of my family now, and now he's saying he's going away? Can you imagine? Betrayal? Abandonment? Denial? Think about that in your own life. You're hanging out with some folk, and you got a buddy who betrays you. How you feeling? You got a friend that you believe loves you, and you come to find out your friend saying some things behind your back. Sharing things that were secret to you and them, and that all of a sudden that person now has turned on you. Can you imagine what that had to feel like? Can, can you imagine again being with somebody for many, many years and that person say, I got to go away. Don't you understand how that feels like sense of abandonment? They're leaving me and there's nothing I can do about it. How would that make you feel? To know again somebody, somebody who knows you so well that, I mean, they know everything there is to know about you. And then one day they say, oh, I don't, I don't know her. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Think about how that make you feel just to think about that. That's why Jesus had to say to his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. They got all of these emotions that they're dealing with. We got all this, this, these, these, this confusion that they're dealing with. They got this chaos that they're dealing with. So he has to turn to them and say, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, in other words, don't, don't let it be ongoing. In other words, I know what I'm saying is troubling. To say that I'm going to leave you and go away from you, I know that has to be troubling. But, 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 but I need to provide you what a word of comfort. And here, and here, and here is how you arrive at that, at that word of comfort. Because the reality for all of us, we can all experience trouble in different levels. Oh, yeah. There can be some trouble in marriage, right? Sometimes there can be trouble with a parent and children. At times you can have trouble with your neighbors, church members, employer employees, trouble with your sisters and brothers, troubles with your classmates, your friends, and, and even your enemies. Sometimes that trouble manifests itself in physical form. You got, you got some kind of ailment is either in your head or it's your toe. And everything else in between. Just The doctor just tell you one thing after another. It, it go from being neuro neurological to gout. It's just all kind of stuff from your head to your toe. And, and you, you got to hear what they say that could happen, might happen, and then when you read the prescription, you almost don't want to take the medicine because all, all, every last one of them instructions with the medicine you're taking say it could, you could die from taking it. I promise you, doesn't matter to say I don't take nothing that I don't read and because all this stuff been going on lately, I've been having to take some medicine, I'm reading every last one of them. Whether it had to do with sinus or anything else, it could kill you. I'm saying, Lord, have mercy. It's just trouble everywhere you turn. That 
you got the trouble of alcoholism, the trouble of drug abuse, whether it's illegal or legal. Dealing, you got the trouble sometimes just within yourself of dealing with your own anger, yeah. jealousy, yeah. unforgiveness. And then, and then sometimes you can have financial trouble, yeah. lack of money. Yeah. And then even in that lack of money, you got major bills that come up. You can't, you can't pay for those major bills. You got major medical things come up. You get... They talk about foreclosing on the house because you ain't been able to pay your house. You got, you got, you got breaking leases, rental contracts. You got all of that stuff going on, man, and you just feel some trouble yeah. on the inside. Sometimes the trouble comes because you spend too much. Yeah. Yeah. Or don't, don't let it turn that you owe the hour in. Oh, trouble. <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble. You just, and it comes from every, just every sort of direction. And if you notice, trouble don't ask if it's okay to come. <laughs> if you notice that trouble don't get your permission, hey, is it, is it okay? Is it okay? You know, and it don't, it don't, even, it, it, it don't even ask you, now which kind of trouble would you like? <laughs> it just come, and it come, and, it, and, and there's nothing, there's nothing you can, you, I mean, seriously, y'all, you know, I mean, in, in most of our lives, whatever the trouble is, we always thinking, Lord, if I had that trouble, that probably wouldn't be too bad. You know, but what I learned, whatever trouble come my way, whatever trouble come my way, it's apparent that's the only trouble I can handle. That's, that's what I'm learning. I'm learning that whatever it is, that's the only one I can handle. I can't handle your trouble. I can't handle my friend's trouble. I can't handle my wife's trouble. I can't handle my children. Only trouble I can handle is my trouble. Because no matter how bad my trouble is, I always hear somebody else who got some trouble that sounds worse than mine. And I've learned to say, Lord, I know I got trouble, so Lord, I just keep the one I got. Help me to deal with the one I got. Help me to go through with what I need to go through with the one I got because it's parent to me. The only trouble I can handle is the trouble I got. Could you just turn to a neighbor, just remind them, you're going to have trouble. So now, Jesus spoke to them a prohibition for, for comfort. Let not your heart be troubled. That, that was an imperative. That was a command. Let not your heart be troubled. Stop worrying. That's a command the Lord gives us. Matthew chapter 6. Stop worrying. Paul picked it up in Philippians chapter 4. He says, be anxious for nothing. That's what the Lord tells us. But, but, but isn't it easier hearing than doing it? Isn't it easier saying it than doing it? Can I get a witness over here? Can I get somebody over here to help me? It's, it's easy to tell folks, stop, you don't have to worry. The Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. It's easy to turn to folks and say, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. All of your ways, Lord of Woo! Baby, baby, I'm telling you, the Lord's going to take care of you. See you later. Oh, but it's another thing. It's another thing. It's another thing. When the Lord says to you, let not your heart be troubled. Not, not the next door neighbor. Not, not your fellow member in your pew. Yeah. The person that's sitting in the spot where you are right now. Yeah. The Lord is saying to you, yeah. whoever you are, let not your heart be troubled. But, but here's the good news about the Lord. He'll never tell you to do something that he doesn't give you the power or the reason or give you a result as to why he's telling you that. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the second movement in the text. Jesus spoke to them, first of all, the prohibition for comfort. 
But here's the second thing. Jesus spoke to them the principle of his cause. He spoke to them the principle of his cause. Let me, let me, let me see if I can just, just, just say it this way. Uh, in other words, the principle is, is the rule of conduct. It's the, it's the habit that God wants you to form. Uh, doing the right thing is the yeah. primary source. Yeah. It's, it's, what, it's what he wants you to do. It's the most important thing that you can do. So Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. I know you're feeling, you're wondering who is going to betray me. I know you're still wondering where I'm going. I know you're troubled by the fact that Judas or Peter will deny me. And watch this. When you read the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it actually says Jesus actually prophesied, all of you going to leave me tonight. And all of them were saying, oh, no, 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 no. Everybody else will leave you, but I ain't leaving you. Yeah. And y'all know what happened when they got in that garden. Everybody scattered yeah. Yeah. and left Jesus behind. Yeah. Yeah. So they all dealing with the sense of betrayal, yeah. abandonment, yeah. denial. They all going to leave and scatter away from Jesus. And that was their reality. So Jesus has to say to them, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Well, Jesus, if I'm... If I'm troubled, how do I get out of it? I'm glad you asked. And here's the answer. Believe in God. <laughs> that, 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 that's it. Let not your heart be troubled. What do I do when trouble comes? Believe in God. What, what do I do when I got anxiety? Believe in God. Take your medication later, but believe in God. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Believe in God. And if you believe in God, you probably won't need a glass of wine. If you believe in God, you probably won't need a hit of Hennessy. If you believe in God, you probably don't need to be merry with marijuana. Because the reality is, every time we got trouble, we looking for a cure. We're looking for something. Maybe if you believe in God, you won't rush to the medicine cabinet. Believe in God. Listen, folks, I'm not, I'm not putting down the reality of anxiety. Yeah. Those things are real in so many people's lives. I'm not, I'm not putting down the reality that we can experience chemical balances and imbalances in our mind. Thank God for therapists. Yeah. I just need to say that. Sometimes when you're going through some tough stuff, there's nothing wrong with seeking some therapeutic counseling. It's nothing, it's nothing wrong with just kind of just being able to kind of unload whatever your situation is. It don't make you weak. Matter of fact, it make you wise. But, but, but when you're doing that, you better believe. Can, can I get a witness in here? Be, because if you don't believe, you can become a long-time client. You can become a long-time patient. It can become an ongoing or recurring situation. But when you believe, listen, the trouble is real. The, 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 the trouble is right in our face. The trouble is taking place right now. Death has happened. Divorce has happened. Bad news has happened. Cancer is a reality. I got the trouble. What God is saying, notice, notice, notice. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Jesus. Here's the thing about Jesus. He always had the right thing to say. No matter what situation he was presented with. You know, go, go back to chapter 12. Go back to chapter 12. The same book, chapter 12. Just for one moment. Chapter 12. Look at verse 49 and 50. It says, for I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his command is everlasting. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. In other words, what it's saying is that whatever was going on in the life of his disciples, he always had the right word to give them a source of comfort even in the midst of that trouble. And what I'm trying to get us to understand that even today, no matter what the trouble may be, he's got a word for us. 
the issue becomes whether or not we believe. Brothers and sisters, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's whether or not we believe. Because here's the thing. Belief don't come this way. It does, it, 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 it's not like this. It is not, it is not like instant coffee. Are oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? I got trouble. I bring the trouble to the Lord. And sometimes in my mind, when I walk away, it ought to be fixed. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on now. Come on. Come on, y'all. Yeah, that's not, that's not, that's, what, what I, what, and when I say it's fixed, I mean it's already changed. No, 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 no. When I bring it to the Lord, the one thing that ought to change my mind about what my trouble is, that ought to change, even though the trouble don't change. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The trouble may last, but I got to change my mind about the trouble because here's what I look at now. I've got to recognize that the Lord that I believe in has more power than my problem. I, I've got to believe that the Lord that I'm talking to has the power to change my situation. But here's what I learned. The Lord is slow to change the situation, but he's fast to change me for my situation. Let, let, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see. Just want to share this with y'all. Share this with you. Listen, and a, a lot of times when I'm sharing these illustrations about myself, I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, oh man, you ain't got nothing going on. It's the things that you all share with me as, as members that when I'm when I be talking about this, I be like, Lord have mercy. I'm gonna share this little old story. And these folks going to be looking at me like, Lee, that ain't nothing. <laughs> but it's my story. All right, it's just my story. All right, here's, here's what I'm saying. You, you all know, you all know, I had a, I had a, I had the sinus surgery done. And so in the, midst of, in the midst of doing it, again, they said a lot of polyps were there. So the, the surgery actually took a, you know, a good bit of time. And they actually put what they call packing uh, in there in order after, you know, so I wouldn't bleed a lot and all of that. But I had the things, the, the, the cure, the, 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 the recovery, would say that that packing had to come out. It can't stay in. So I'm feeling, you know, kind of stuffy. I was saying that to y'all, I feel stuffy all the time. So, so two weeks ago, two weeks ago, Tuesday, I had to go the first time for them to remove some of the packing. All right? So, so I go in. I don't know what they're going to do. You know, so, so Dr. Corson, he put the spray in and he said, I need to deaden it. I'm, I don't know what that's going to mean. But, but, but he had these little, he had these little tubes. Little, little steel tubes sitting over to the side, and 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 they and they, and they, and they, they kind of long, like about like that. Like, okay, all right, it's all right. I don't, I don't know where this is going. But, uh, I know what I'm seeing. You know what I mean? So, okay, all right, so. So anytime, anytime doctor do anything on me, you know, my, one of my hands, I close my eyes. I got my eyes closed. You know, thank God Shug was in there. And, 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 and now I feel this thing going in. Like, ooh, it's going in. Ooh, it's going in, you know. It's like, ooh, wee. Ooh, wee. You know, I got, I, I think I have a high pain tolerance. You know, but I feel this stuff. I feel, I'm feeling some stuff. I mean, you know, I was under anesthesia with the surgery. I hadn't felt nothing, but I'm feeling this. And all of a sudden, man, sweat start popping. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sweating, man. And, and, uh, and, and she told me at the end, she said, Lee, you know, you almost fainted. I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? I said, I said, I said really? Then she said, yeah, man, you almost, you almost went under because I'm trying to figure out, you know, and I, I guess because I thought it was because the doctor just saw me sweating. He put my, he put my, 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 you know, put that, that chair all the way down. And then I start feeling f a fan on me. It was like, I'm like, oh, they blowing air on me. I'm like, oh, this is, this is cool. You know, like, oh, man. But she told me, Lee, you, you almost fainted. I said, oh, well, okay, all right. I guess I didn't, but, you know, that you said it. So now I got to go back two weeks later. This past Tuesday. 
you again with me. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's the second, second time. So ain't gonna be no big nothing. He gonna look and you know, take the scope and look. Oh, you okay? I walk in the room, guess what? Them same two. <laughs> But I'm, I'm preparing this sermon, right? <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. Are y'all getting what? Watch this, watch this. And guess what? The same thing started happening. The doctor, he, he does what he does. And I guess he sees it. Okay, I need, I need to always give him the skin a little break. So he walked out. And when, I, when, when he, when he walked out, I'm praying, Lord, please don't let me faint in this place. Lord, please don't let me don't let me faint in this office. And some of y'all laughing, but that's my recall. In, in other words, I feel the trouble of fainting. And I'm saying, Lord, please, whatever I need to do, show me what to do right now so that I don't fall flat on my face in this office. I think I'm talking loud enough they can hear me, but I don't care. Because right now, I need the Lord to guide me every day as I travel along the way. Can I get a witness in here? So what am I going to do? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. You know why? Two weeks earlier, I almost fainted. But the Lord brought me out. So if I got to deal with it two weeks later, I'm convinced that the same God that brought me out two weeks earlier is going to get me out. Hey! Believe in God! Was it painful? Was, it, was I disturbed? Yeah! But I'm convinced you said believe. Yeah. So no matter what comes up, yeah. the first thing I'm going to do is believe. Yeah. Now when he, when he walked back in, I was all right. Now when he, when he paid me, I got offended. I said, hey, I'm feeling that pain thing. But go do what you need to do. Because the moment I started feeling the trouble, yeah. I was praying, Lord, yeah. help me. Yeah. Can, can I encourage somebody yeah. today that no matter what trouble come up in your life, don't resort to nothing else first other than God. Yeah. Not the drugs, God. Yeah. Not, not the wine, God. Yeah. Not your best friend, God. Should have. But did he come? Yeah. Yeah. Not the fact that he didn't give you 
what you asked him for, but he gave you what you needed. Come on, y'all. Come on. Can I get somebody to help me in here? That's the kind of God you can believe. also in me, yeah. in my father's house, dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it ain't River Oaks. Yeah. And if you're thinking River Oaks, you're thinking too small. that you're going through. But I'm going to make you a promise that trouble won't last always. Hey! But I got to go and prepare a place for you. I'm coming back, y'all. I'm coming back. I'm coming back one day. And I'm going to bring you to myself. But in the meantime, I want y'all to rely on... Come on, y'all. Just praise him. Come on, y'all, just give him the glory. Come on, y'all, just give him the honor. Come on, shout if you need to shout. Holler if you need to holler. Scream if you need to scream. But the Lord is saying to you, I've got you covered. Believe. 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 I'm going away, but I'm coming back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Father, we love you. We love you, Lord.